Hello and welcome. My name is Ash. I'm going to be the host today for Closing and I'm Ready and effectively welcoming, welcoming a new agent. Now, um, in this training, you guys basically are going to learn uh, for new team builders how to bring on agents and how to make sure they stay because those first 10 days are quite crucial. So well, let's go ahead and kind of dive into what we're doing today. Before we dive in, I do like to introduce myself, especially if you've never seen my trainings before. I like to kind of get to where you guys can know me as a trainer and as an agent. So if you ever need help, I am here for you. Um, all of the trainings that I record are going to be posted there on Trainings with Ash. That's all you have to search in YouTube. A um, little bit about me. I've been with Archer and Evolution for over two years now. Um, in those two years, I've become a top presenter, leader, travel slash mentorship trainer. I specialize in marketing, mentoring, all-inclusive, and destination weddings. I love to learn about niches and how to market them. Um, hi, Sylvian. Uh, this is live, but also recorded, so I might be talking to people in between. Um, I love to learn about niches and how to market them. Um, so if you have a weird niche, feel free to reach out to me. I kind of come up with a lot of good marketing tactics. And as always, I'm here. If you ever need help, I'm always available. You guys can feel free to reach out to me um, via Facebook or YouTube, whatever you guys find me on. I will more than likely be able to help you without any issues. So. That is enough about me. Let's go ahead and get started on our training for today. A little bit about of an overview for you guys. We're going to talk about setting up the close. That's one of the most important parts. You got to have all your features put in place before you're actually able to close an agent. Uh, where to get your link from, how to follow up with prospects, what happens after you get a sign up, welcoming them, the follow through, and then some good tips and tricks for you guys that you might need if you're struggling with being able to close the agent. Starting up with the setting up to close. Most important part is creating a calendar. Um, you need a calendar basically to be able to schedule them, right? There's a reason that that calendar works other than other places that people might try to do the calendar. The first important thing is that they have you the ability to text them. Now there is a limit to texting. I've already reached my limit for the month. I think it's like a hundred text messages, but it's going to be able to text reminders. And most importantly, it's going to be able to email reminders. And then also it sends out the link after the meeting. These are like the three most important parts when it comes to doing Calendly. Okay. If you don't have that set up, it doesn't matter if you have 50 people scheduled for a meeting tomorrow. If they're not getting that reminder email and that reminder text or whatever that has set up, some kind of reminder, some kind of link after, they're not going to close every single time they will have nowhere to go right another thing i also recommend inside your calendar is making sure that you put invited by your name in a, re a reminder email okay um this is really good so if you ever attend the meeting which is the next step is hopping on zoom if you're ever attending that meeting you can see who's invited by right you can say okay well i actually have five people in the meeting or six people in the meeting, right so as it says, the next step after making sure to set up the close is you want to hop on Zoom. If they can see you, they're more than likely able to sign with you. If they don't see you in the meeting at all, um, they might not sign up because they don't know who you are, right? Now, are you always going to be available for a meeting? Absolutely not. But if you are available, feel free to hop on, especially right at the end, right before they close the getting the I'm ready, right? So um, a lot of people kind of hop on about 45 minutes in and then listen for your name and be prepared to contact any potential prospects. So that is the most important part for setting up the close. Now, of course, most of you guys should know where to get your link from. But if you don't, here is how to get your link. You're going to log into myevolutiontravel.com. You do have to log in twice if you log in from the website. And then you're going to click Enroll Agent. It's going to be in the right upper hand corner, and you're going to copy that link. So let's go ahead and take a look at it real quick, just to make myself happy in this training and say, hey, I showed you guys where it's at. <laughs> How about that? So let's go in here, ignore my email and all this other crap I have pulled up. I have everything in the world pulled up except what I need. So if you were to technically go from Evolution Travel, 
Oh. It's gonna take me all the way back. Okay, that's fine. So if we were to go to Evolution Travel, just like this, and we're gonna well, this is gonna log me into my travel site. That's fine. All right. It's a start. I'm gonna log you into your website, and then you can just click back office or just log into your back office. However you want to do it. Like I said, it makes you log in twice if you go that way. But what you're essentially going to do is click on this enroll agent that's right there. So that enroll agent, and then you're going to be able to go ahead and send this link. This is the link you send right here. Highlight that one. Okay. Make sure you have the ending of it because that is your agent ID. So when they click next, it populates here. If it doesn't have that population, they're not going to sign up because they're not going to understand why it doesn't have that. Right. So. That's the first part. And then also, I'll show you my calendar really quick. I don't really care if you guys see my calendar. It doesn't bother me. So I'll show you my calendar real quick. And when I was talking about, I'm going to be honest with you, I have two reminders. So let's go in here. Ignore the other one because that was my old one. I only schedule four days out. I wouldn't suggest going out any further than that. Um, I need to add more times. But if we were to look at the email confirmations, Immediately after booking, they get a confirmation. If they cancel, they get this. I don't have any of these reminders on because I make my own here. So first we have the regular reminder. Oh, oh why can't I open it? Hello. Edit. There we go. So I have my regular reminder in there, which is just post, um, I would say one hour before the event. That looks like, hey, thank you for coming or thank you for signing up. Here's your reminder. I want to share this with you. I want to schedule the direct link. Very important. Zoom ID, stuff like that, right? And then in regards, and also have in there something about the opportunity, because I only like to bring on agents from certain states or certain countries. I don't want to invite the entire world. So I like to put that in there too. And then that also kind of helps to get rid of that whole issue of somebody's attending from India or something like that. Well, you can go in there twice and say, well, I asked you in the beginning. And then I also asked you in the reminder to make sure that you're from the right country. So if you choose to attend afterwards, then that's on you. So that's how I kind of handle that situation. And then we'll go back. I send out two of these. So you're going to see one that's five hours. This is just a friendly reminder. It has nothing in it. An hour before the meeting, I send out another. Okay. And then ignore the pink one. We're talking about the purple, okay? That was when I used to try to do my own scheduled ones. Didn't work very well. Email reminder also goes out 45 minutes before. So they're going to get an hour before and then 45 minutes before. They're going to get the exact same email. Why? Sometimes it goes to spam. So one of them will hit their inbox. That's why I do it, okay? Then another important thing is timing with the calendar. You're going to have 40 minutes and 46 minutes. You can adjust this to whatever. Sometimes I, if I feel like the presenter kind of presents fast, I'll adjust it to 35 minutes. But you want your links to go out. Even if it's a little bit early, nobody's really looking at their phones right now. They're, they're involved in the meeting. They're not going to check their phone until they're told to. So even if it goes out a little bit earlier, this part right here can make or break you from signing up an agent. Because if it's not going out, that thank you email, and if it's not going out or the link's not right, they will automatically make it to where they won't sign because they want it right then and there. It has to be all seamlessly tied together, okay? And then um, I do have a text reminder that goes out as well. But like I said, you only get 100 texts um, per month. So I, for me on day two, what are we, day three, I'm out of text. So it doesn't really matter for that part, okay? So that's how I have that set up for my calendar. Let's go back to the presentation now. I'm gonna switch my screen to share. And if you guys have any further questions about Calendly, feel free to ask. I will definitely answer them. Um, but that's just kind of my my tips for you, right? So now we know where to get our link. We know about Calendly. Let's keep going. The most important part, following up with prospects. So as soon as you get that I'm ready list, whether you get it, um, let's just say you attended the meeting and the presenter posts the I'm ready, right? You guys want to follow up within 30 minutes of getting that list. You have roughly about an hour, I would say, from when they say, I'm ready, to the time that they start thinking about it, you know, doing this, doing that, they get sidetracked. You have roughly about an hour between that, that you can get your, your agent to sign. Maybe they had questions and they hopped off. Maybe they got busy, but they did put an I'm ready. So there is a good chance that they might be able to sign up. Maybe they have a certain day that they have to sign up with, right? 
but you want to make sure you do that follow-up within 30 minutes of the presentation to close. Now, what I would recommend, especially if you're a new team builder, start learning about the basics of being an agent because that's 90% of the questions that you're going to get asked, okay? So be prepared to answer any questions that they may have and maybe even possibly getting on the phone with them if they want to talk about joining. Now, I will tell you, um, I used to get on the phone with everybody that was unready and I would call them or text them, whatever. It can go either way, okay? You can share the entire thing and they cannot be interested or they might actually want to just talk to somebody. So be prepared to do that, but you don't always have to do that um, unless they're really adamant about doing so. Also, check your email. A lot of these people, when they're signing up, you're going to see that reply too. And it's going to look like this. I'll show you. Let me get my um, let me get my screen back here. So let's just go into one of my emails. Yeah, here we go. I have a ton of these. I have so many calendars that um, basically basically it goes to updates now, right? But let me just find one, give you guys a rough idea here. It'll look kind of like I have a ton of them. Where are they? I also started deleting a lot of my emails because they used to drive me crazy. But it'll say like reply to, or maybe it might have moved it there. See how it says attending, attending, attending? Well, when they start confirming, it'll say reconfirmed attendance. If they reply to any of these, it automatically goes back to your email that you have set up on file. So if you have somebody that's I'm ready, but has yet to actually sign up or if they have a question or something like that, check your email because it's going to come right back to your email. I just had one today. I, I must have deleted it. Um, oh, here, right there. Boom. Reminder, I'm extremely sorry I was unable to attend and not give you notice. I had a family emergency. Would it be possible to reschedule? So something like that. I missed it, right? but she can easily do there, but she already missed it. So I might as well just do like this. Okay, here's the link. And just to let you know, they actually have Calendly inside your email. So you can just insert the link. Watch that. A lot of people don't know that either. All right, so then I can just send it. So make sure you guys check your email and look for any emails like that too, because Calendly will send those out. And you don't know if a client, if a, a client, if a prospect reach out to you and they're like, hey, um, I might sign up in four or five days or something like that. That's what that email will say a lot of the time. Okay. So make sure that you're checking your email to see if they replied. And if you do not know the answer, make sure you ask your mentor. When I first started out with team building, I'm not going to lie to you. I started team building three months in and I didn't know all the answers, but as I experienced it and as I learned it, I knew all the answers because you're already learning as a new agent and that's exactly what they're going to be doing as well they're learning to be a new agent so you've already done that part so it shouldn't be too too hard answering questions and if not like i said ask your mentor okay missing this part right here um, can hurt your potential with closing agents so don't be afraid to reach out to them i think a lot of us get nervous at first when we have a lot of readies we're like oh i don't know if i want to talk to them i totally understand that but you could be missing out on a potential agent and if they have another meeting scheduled that day or later that week, then somebody could be taking that potential agent that you have because you weren't, you were afraid to reach out to them, right? So keep going. So let's just say they attended the meeting, you followed up with them, and now you've got a sign up. Most important part is, is you need to have a welcome email prepared with all of the welcome information and first steps ready to go out. This is one of the biggest things when they first sign up, we're going to naturally guide them to do their uh, PTA training, right? We're going to guide them to go into that, that training, complete the nine modules and get their certificate. But a lot of people, especially people like me, when I first signed up, I completed that stuff maybe in 20 minutes because I was so excited to get started. I got me a notebook. I joined um, under Emily at like eight o'clock at night. And that lady had to send me all the steps within the first night because I was ready to go. I was motivated, right? So if you get an agent like that, it's very possible to get your first agent like that. Have everything prepared and everything set up. So if you're going to do the welcome email or welcome text, have that already saved in your notes or have your sent folder ready um, so it can just go out as soon as you get it, okay? So let's go to what it would be like if you were to get a sign up. So in that email, what should be in there? 
first thing is, is if you have them signing up for a new agent program, a lot of the teams now have like team websites, um, new agent program, something like that. If your team has that, make sure it's in there. Also make sure there's clear instructions to get to it. Now, if you're like our team website, it has to be approval. It takes 24 hours to get approval. So for our team website, we need something to do in between that 24 hours because nobody's just going to sit there and do nothing right after they sign up. So you might want to have a welcome packet in there just in case. Make sure that that welcome packet is up to date or you use your Platinum's packet. If you're not ready to make your own packet, that's totally fine. But make sure you have a packet that's always up to date in there or it could look very unprofessional for you. The welcome packet needs to include all of the first steps that they will need and what to continue after. Don't leave them hanging, okay? Don't leave them to a point where it's like, all right, get your orientation. Um, for me, it's new agent phase two. What do you do after that? Okay, they need to have a continuous setup of what to do next. And then another important part of what needs to go on the email is that group chat link or your contact info. Now, I will be honest with you. I share my contact info in the beginning. I put my number, I put my email, all that important stuff. But for me, that group chat link, like we use Facebook Messenger 90% of our time, right? I don't send that until after orientation. That's a personal preference. But if you feel comfortable and you have, you know, multiple people in the chat, then go ahead and share the link. The reason I don't send it till after orientation is because sometimes when people first sign up, they have that 10-day money-back guarantee, right? So they're thinking about it. They're starting it. They're doing the process. But for me, if you go and spend an hour in orientation, I know that you want to stay. <laughs> like there's a good chance that if you spent that whole hour and you've done the vendors, you've done all the hard stuff, you're probably going to stay. So I will send that group chat at that, at that time. I'm very serious about my group chat, though. Um, it's only a travel chat. You're not allowed to discuss anything in there that requires your account or anything like that. So maybe that's why. But if you're comfortable with that, at least make sure you put your contact info in there because if they get stuck on something and if they get frustrated with it, they'll leave it. If they leave it, they won't pick it back up. So make sure they have a way to contact you if they get frustrated. Um, I had an agent that just signed up yesterday. She texted me all day uh, yesterday after she signed up. Was it a little overwhelming? Yes, of course. But I always kind of put myself back in that spot when I was a new agent. I blew up Emily's phone. Like, give me the next step. Let's go. Let's go. So I have to put myself in their shoes and I have to understand that they're excited. So let's just make them even more excited by giving them all the answers. So here's a sample email that I have. Um, it's a little, a little bit older, so I've updated over time, but it gives you the basics of everything that you need. So for us, uh, we have welcome to team mover and shakers that's my team i'm so excited for you to join i look forward to working with you while you start this new journey please read the email entirely before completing the steps here you'll find all the information to get started if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me now if you're doing international make sure you set up a whatsapp because i put whatsapp now in parentheses because they don't know how to contact you um if they're international whatsapp is primarily what people use to contact so for us is the setting up the first step is to set up the team website reason being it takes 24 hours to get approval for us so we need them to go ahead and set that up before they do anything else right but you guys can put them in any order that you feel comfortable doing so approval should take less than 24 hours please get started on the new agent tab when you get approved let me know if you don't now here's the next step as you continue to complete this please follow up with me along the way Second step is you want them to go get their certificate, all right? If you don't have a team website that needs approval, then make this your first step. But this is the first major part that they need to do. They need to get their certificate. They need to know how to get their certificate. You can include a video in there if you want to, but make sure they understand this part here. Another thing that I make them do that really helps me is um, here it says, please let me know as soon as you're done with your certificate, you can text me at this number normally they send an email now but this is very very important this lets me know what they're up to this lets me know that they're working on it right so this isn't really for them they always think that we keep their um, certificates on file or something like that I don't it's in my email I don't look at it ever after that but it lets me know that you're working so if I don't hear from you after you've signed up and you haven't even got your certificate yet I know not to really count that agent because they're probably going to drop 
So that's a good way for me to go, oh, okay, they're working on their certificate. The next step after certificate normally is um, new agent orientation. So I know how serious they are, okay? So for me, I have a great resource guide, which is basically like the new agent program, but written out. Um, if you find yourself waiting for approval, and then here's that, uh, feel free to get started on the new agent orientation in the packet. So as you guys can see, I gave them their first starting steps, right? And then once they complete that new agent orientation, what does it say? Join our Facebook Messenger group. So if they complete this part, if they start working in that packet, then they can join this. So I try to keep it in that order so that I don't have people just automatically jumping in straight to the to the um, Facebook Messenger without at least completing that new agent orientation packet. Okay. So this is just a sample email to give you guys an idea of all what needs to be included. You can do it however you want to, whatever your platinum or whoever has already set it up for you, then follow with that. But make sure it has all these important components because this is everything that they need. How to start, where to go, who to contact. That's all they really need in the beginning. And this is it. Okay. If not, they'll start winding up and going to different parts of the website and confusing themselves. They have all these kind of new agent packets and new agent resource guides on the website, and it might not fit what you actually teach. So make sure that you have something to guide them in. Okay. Next thing I highly recommend is sending a text or a call. I like to send a welcome text and let them know, you know, like, hey, welcome aboard. If you have any questions, let me know. If I'm busy, I will send out the welcome email and I'll put my number in it just like that. But if I'm free, I will send a text. If I feel really free and I don't have anything going on, I will also say, hey, if you want to talk, we can get on the phone. Let me know. OK, but sometimes I just send texts if life's too busy. Any contact is better than none. So if all you can do is send a welcome email, that's perfectly fine, too. So a lot of times I'll tell you, too that um you know like when i was showing you guys how they replied to the calendar if they're replying to my calendar i will reply back to them and say hey welcome aboard they'll normally send like their agent id or something i'll say hey welcome aboard i just sent you the welcome email let me know if you have any questions and then i put my name something like that just a, a reach out to say hey i acknowledge that you have signed up welcome aboard here's your information to get started okay tips on welcoming Make sure that you sound excited. Make sure you write the biggest welcome aboard possible, okay? Be excited for yourself because you got a new agent, okay? Um, if they call you and they want to talk to you, tell them your story and share your success. If you are new, you don't have to exactly come out and say, hey, I'm brand new. We don't have to say it like that, right? Hey, I just started mentoring. Here is this, this, and this. That sounds a lot better than saying I just started, okay? So if you're just started mentoring, it's okay because you already know the basics of being an agent. That's fine. I highly recommend creating a welcome flyer in Canva. So when they join the group chat, um, I like to welcome them. So I will make a flyer like welcome aboard. Um, if they do any kind of big bookings, I do welcome. I do flyers for that. We celebrate a lot in my chat. I try to make it fun and interactive for the most part. And then another thing that I like to do after welcoming, I check in with them after a couple of days. So I go back to my sent emails and I see the emails that I've sent out in the last three or four days. And I like to just follow up with it if I don't hear anything from them, um, because a lot of people will sign up and they become silent. And that means that they can drop. So I like to keep them talking so I know that they will actually continue to work. All right. Follow through. So last couple of parts. Um, once you kind of get them set up and they start going, things are going great. You want to make sure that you're keeping them because that 10 day hold is kind of crucial, right? They can get their money back at that point. So they are trying this out. You want to make sure that you're like kind of on point with them, but especially within the first 10 days. So the best ways to do this is to give your agents a constant path to success. Always have something for them to do. Now, the orientation in itself has a lot to do. OK, so that's going to take a good three or four days for them to complete. Sometimes people do it instantly. Sometimes they don't. That's fine. Once they get done with that, you want to have something set up to go next step for because you can't just do orientation. Then, all right, you're free to go. They don't have nothing set up. OK, that's just vendors and, and the basics of orientation. So for me, myself and I, I created a new agent phase two based off of Amy Joe's. She gave me the original one. And I made a new agent phase two and that new agent phase two, it is public. So if you want to use it for your team, I don't care, but 
basically it puts all of the steps. So putting the social media together, the business, the Google business, all of this, setting up that foundation for your business is basically what new agent phase two is. And then also kind of teaching them how to launch. That's the kind of next step that they need. Okay. That's the constant path to success. That's going to give them enough to do probably for the next two weeks because it's a lot, right? But it has a checklist in it so they can go through each one and make sure they're doing it correctly. But um, it gives them that path to success, that, that constant, I have to do something. And that's what makes agents stay. Once they have no nothing to do after that point, that's when they get bored and they don't want to do this or that. Like you have to give them the constant path, okay? Be encouraging even in the smallest things. When they get that first booking, I want you to make the biggest praise about it possible. I want you to really just go and create a flyer. Um, I don't care if it's 500, 600, whatever it is. It's that first booking. It's that rush. It's the excitement of getting it closed. Make sure you really go in. And even if they get their social media set up, I had one agent, um, he set up his TikTok and he was really excited about it. And then he got a thousand followers and then he went live and we kind of followed him on the whole journey of it because that's exciting for somebody who's never done TikTok before, right? Make sure always that you present yourself as a mentor, not as a manager or a friend. Um, this is something that I've kind of went through for the, since I've been here for three months till now. Okay. There's a big difference in mentoring. Okay. Um, how do I say this? So you don't want to essentially be the manager. And a lot of people confuse this as managers. They think that we have to manage everything that they do. Nope. I always remind them, hey, you're still an independent contractor. I am here to guide you. And that's it. Right. So one thing we don't want to do is kind of do things for them. They're independent contractors. We can show them. We can walk them through it. But you don't want to ever just do something for them because they won't learn. And then they have to come back and ask you all the time. And when I say present yourself as a mentor, um, I honestly, <laughs> if you know me, um, I have a strict way of how people talk to me, especially when they're underneath me. Um, I don't talk to them as like friends. They talk to me as their mentor. Do we get close with each other? Absolutely. Um, when I was delivering my twins three months ago, um, everybody knew about it. Everybody showed up to my baby shower. So do we have that closeness? Absolutely. But they all know that at the end of the day, I'm still their mentor and I'm here to guide them, right? So make sure you have that clear set path that that is what I'm here for. So set clear expectations up front and do not promise success without hard work. A lot of times when agents start this, they think it's one of those quick get rich kind of things. It doesn't work that way. We know it doesn't work that way. We know that you have to put in hard work. So I tell them that in the beginning. I don't go out and say, oh, you have to work really, really hard. That's not what I'm saying. I just don't want you guys to go out and just lead with the expectation that, oh, you can just set up and start booking and it's going to be great. It doesn't work that way for everybody. And I've had agents who book things without even making a social media account. And then I've had agents that made six, fifth, I don't know, 60, 50 posts, whatever on social media. And it took them that just to get one booking. So you don't want to set that expectation that they're just going to get in there and it's going to be great. Like don't ever set that higher expectation. Make sure you listen to their needs and offer proper solutions. You listen to everything that they're asking you. And when they send you a text and they're just immediately popping off, a lot of people do that. That's because they've waited too long to reach out to you and now they're frustrated. If they're like that, don't get offended, okay? They get frustrated because they're bored. So if they're frustrated, if they pop off at you, listen to their needs. Listen to exactly what they're telling you. They might be something simple as, I have somebody that um, has this issue where they'll be like, oh, well, I'm not getting any bookings. You know what my number one question is? Let me see your social media. Let me see what the marketing you're doing. Because 90% of that time, I know that they're not marketing. And that's how I can give them something to do. Okay? Demonstrate your knowledge and teach your agents. They need to know what they're doing. Never assume that they automatically know how to set up a Facebook page. Never assume that they know how to set up branch up. These agents don't know anything. And a lot of them don't have this background. People like me. When I first started, I only had 150 friends on Facebook. The only thing I ever did on Facebook was share memes. So I literally started from scratch. And I'm from Alabama. Like, we have a small town, okay? We have, like, a Burger King. That's what we have. So imagine me 
trying to put myself in the middle of all of that and get clients. It was extremely hard and I had to work to do this, right? And now I'm established and people know who I am, whatever. But I needed somebody to teach me how to do those small things. And of course, my mentor, Emily, did. But I just want you guys to set the expectations that you might have to do that too. You might have to get on a Zoom and help somebody set up a Facebook page. You might have to record a video of how to set up a Facebook page, okay? But they need to know what to do. They don't ever assume that they just know what they're doing because they don't. So some tips and tricks, last but not least. Um, agents, when you first start, especially if you guys ever remember being overwhelmed, a lot of us were overwhelmed when we first started. Um, for me, we didn't have all this set up when I first started. We didn't have the fancy orientation and the phase two and all of that. So honestly, a lot of it was learning on my own because we were developing these things at the time. So now that we have all of that, we have tendency to be like training 24 seven, right? Especially for our team, I've seen where we have like 10, 12 trainings a day. If you're a new agent, that can be very, very overwhelming. So I make sure right in the beginning, I tell my new agent, do not attend more than two to three trainings per week. If you see all those daily schedule trainings, whatever that is, that's not just for you. Keep in mind, there's people here that's been for seven years. There's people here that's been here for one. There's people that just started. So those trainings are all spaced out and they all have different purposes. Only attend trainings that are meant for you, nothing else. Um, I try to meet with my team weekly. Well, I would, if I, if you're new at team building, you might not want to do that at first. You know, um, I started meeting with my team when I got about five or six agents. We met like every, every two weeks, sometimes weekly. It just depends. Um, now that I have over 130 something right now, we meet every two weeks, <clears throat> but I meet with my agents probably every day. I mean, one or two agents a day. Um, and then the biggest thing that you can do when you're meeting with them, don't just meet with them and let them like you know I let them ask questions I let them get it all out but the most things that I like to ask are what have you done so far what what have you completed what are you working on right now because that is the best thing that you can end a call with is how to guide them they need to know what to do next so I ask them okay well have you set up your social media okay you set up your social media did you set up your branch up in your ralio okay cool so why don't we have these automatic posts going or started marketing we need to do what next Start inviting people to the page because nobody's seeing it. Start posting in groups. Start making mock booking, like giving them something to do next, okay? My tips for Calendly is make sure to have those one-hour text reminders. If you can, if they max out, then it is what it is. But at least you have some kind of reminder. I like to send two, so make sure you do that. Um, I also like to do a ask to confirm. You're going to see that um, sometimes in the text. And now that the text stopped, this was back in the day when they used to allow us the text. But now that the text stopped, at the bottom of my confirmation email in my calendar, I also tell them to reply to the email to confirm that they're attending. This has helped my attendance significantly because they have something to do. If they know that they have to confirm it, then they're going to confirm it. That helps me a lot. Um, I also like to sometimes text the link to those that are ready. So if I see that people are ready in the meeting, I will go into Calendly and I'll grab their number and I'll say, here's the sign up link, da, 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 da. text it to them straight from my phone. Um, I don't do that all the time because I do have bigger meetings now. But when I did have those small meetings when I first started, when I got like six or seven people, then I absolutely will text that link. And then, of course, make sure you follow up with your prospects. So um, a little bit of extras, other tips. The biggest thing I like to suggest always is to pay attention to silent agents. Um, I know one business partner of mine that texts her agents every week. That's a good start. Okay. If you have too many, then don't do that. But pay attention to those people that get silent because there, there's two things that they can do. One, they can either be really good bookers and they don't need your help. I've had those. Or two, they're silent because they're going to drop. So you don't want to get too silent on, on your agent. All right. Check in with them. Hey, what's your working on? How's it going? If they tell you life has been crazy, that's a that's Okay, fine. I totally understand. That's the great part about being an independent contractor. You can work when you want. So just let me know when you're ready to pick things back up or if you need any help. Okay. Biggest thing you can do as a mentor is study how to market. That's 90% of your questions. 90% of your questions you're going to ask are, how do I get clients? So it's your job as a mentor to study that so you can have the answers. 
um, begin doing training. Um, if they see your face, they really like that. Uh, I try to do at least four to five trainings a week or not a week, a month. So they can see my face here throughout. And then I've also kind of got myself a new agent orientation, new agent phase two. I got all kinds of trainings that I have set up. Why? Because when they see me and I'm their mentor, it gives them confidence to be with me because they know that I can lead people and I can train people. And that's very important as a mentor. Lastly, um, my extra tip is everybody should have success steps now. If not, David McCovey provides them for us. So there are some kind of success steps. Okay. Make sure you share those success steps at the beginning. Make sure that those success steps correlate or cor correlate to um, your new agent program. I've had a very high success with my agents completing the success steps because they're outlined in my new agent program. It literally goes down the list and I have them in order. And so therefore, when they get to the bottom and for us, you have to either book travel or bring on new agents, something like that, right? That's the last thing that they have to focus on. And I keep it strict to that so that they have that easy booking travel, right? So make sure that you have your success steps ready to go in the beginning so that they can complete it. It's exciting to them to get that money back. So make sure that you have that available always to them. They don't have to go look for it. All right. So that is all I have for today. I will go ahead and stop the recording so we can ask questions. But um, if you're watching the recording, make sure that you like this video. If you liked it, make sure you follow and subscribe so you can get more trainings that I post later on in the month.